great to have you in today. There's a lot of stuff going on in sports right now, and I thought we'd play a little game in our Best for Last today, Joey, where um, there's decisions teams have to make. And it's sports is very tough. Outside of baseball, they've all got salary caps. And you get into situations as a professional sports franchise, you're not just getting rid of bad players. You're not just getting rid of mediocre players. You're off in a situation where, <laughs> I mean, the Raiders are like, we got to get rid of a Hall of Fame player in Khalil Mack. And because we can't pay Derek Carr and Khalil Mack and Amari Cooper. So that's sports in general, and it's uncomfortable. And I was, I was talking about the Cowboys and Ezekiel Elliott. So I'm going to play. Let's do press conference sound effects today. I'm going to be a general manager, Joy, okay. of four franchises. All right, Colin, you're now the general manager of the Cowboys. Okay. All right. There you go. Okay. Fit the part. Do you think your organization should pay Zeke the big bucks or consider trading him? Um... My feeling, general managers often wear the team hat right. around the facilities. Yes. My feeling is it is bad judgment two years out to be asking for a contract extension. This is my problem with Zeke. Okay, two years out and you're asking for it. Now, time out. You sign that contract. I understand you're a running back. He's got 1,500 carries college to pro. They have seven great young players. Cowboys over the weekend, we were told we had the best young players. I'm going to strongly consider trading Ezekiel Elliott. We used to have a coach here named Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson did it with Herschel Walker. I will call teams around the league. If I can get two first-round picks and a marginal backup back, we drafted another running back this year, I'll trade Zeke. Okay, uh, a little switch up here. You're now the general manager of the Chargers. All right, there's a report that running back Melvin Gordon wants a new contract at market value, and if he doesn't get it, he's going to demand a trade. How should your organization handle this situation? Well, first of all, we moved up to get him, so we liked him. We like A lot of teams won't draft running backs in the first round. We did, and we moved up to draft him. And we've already talked behind the scenes. We'd like to give him a contract, but... Since Anthony Lynn became coach, all our running backs are averaging four and a half yards a carry. In fact, Austin Eckler averages more yards than Melvin Gordon because of our blocking schemes. There is a value. He's been a good guy. He's been a good charger. He has played hurt. We will give him a contract. We will massively front load it. Analytically, we don't trust he's going to be great in four years. We're pretty sure he's got two more great years. So I'm going to sign him. He's been a good charger. He stayed out of trouble. He's been great in the locker room. He's been totally dependable, unlike the Zeke in Dallas. So, And by the way, he's only a year out. It is reasonable for a running back who's been a workhorse to ask for it. So we're going to sign Melvin. We're going to front load it, try to get a better deal than he wants, but we'll re-sign him. All right, you're now the general manager of the Rockets. We're going to switch sports here. Charles Barkley and Russell Westbrook or said that Russell Westbrook needs to give the point guard position to James Harden. Do you agree with Barkley's suggestion? Um, yes, James Harden's the better player. It's his offense. It's analytically his team. This is James Harden's team. Uh, I think we have a problematic situation that's not ideal with any coach, but we already fired Mike D'Antoni's staff. I would give him a, uh, a, a golden parachute contract. We appreciate your service. There's too many people in the building that don't believe in D'Antoni, and you have to to make Westbrook and Harden work. Those guys have to believe that a coach is secure, and they don't buy that with D'Antoni. So I've got a passive-aggressive coach on the last year of his contract in an untenable, potentially, situation with two ball-centric guards. I'm going to have to fire D'Antoni, call Ty Lu, a more confrontational coach, give him a four-year deal to empower Ty Lu. Therefore, the players know they, they may move us as well as the coach. I'm going to have to fire my coach. Finally, you're now the general manager of the Thunder. You know the situation there. Reports are saying your team is looking to trade Chris Paul to a contender. How are you planning on handling that situation? Uh, we don't have any interest long-term with Chris Paul. By the way, this goes... This hat goes perfectly with my gray hair and my old Bob Parker face. Bob Barker face. Um, actually, we're in a very unique situation. We're not looking to win games now. For the next two years, we kind of like to be bad because we want lottery picks. 
What I want is to figure out a star to build around for those lottery picks. So I'm not going to waste time here. I've got in the next, what is it, seven years, 12 first-round picks. I'm going to move five of them. Jerry West just showed you. Draft picks are 18-year-olds. If you hit on 50%, you're great. What I want the next two years are lottery picks and a star to build around. Who's my star? I go to Philadelphia, and I say, here's five first-round picks. Give me Ben Simmons. Uh, I can find maybe another guy to do it. What I have to do is identify the face of my franchise. It's not Chris Paul. Surrender multiple picks to get that. And then, for the next two years, will be a lottery team. I'll have two young stars around the face of my franchise. So I move Chris. I identify the star I want. It's Ben Simmons. I call Philadelphia, and I give up to five first-round picks, and Chris Paul eat the contract. By the way, they have got size but need more shooters. There's more shooters coming out of college the next several years. Philadelphia can fix that problem. That's the move I'd make. This is I love the general manager. I will say this. I'm not a hat-wearing guy. NBA does very good with hats. That was the best hat out of those four. Yeah. 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 Rockets have strong identity. They have good logos and stuff. Yeah. Very nice. All right, there we go. Those are tough decisions there. Those are very tough decisions. Now, and, and, and by the way, Melvin Gordon's not as good as Zeke. But Melvin Gordon's been good in the room, has not been a pain in the you-know-what. I would. Well, and he's only a year out from his contract. And... Listen, I, again, I'll listen to players in these positions that say, man, can we rework it? I, I, all I have to do with Melvin, I'm going to front load it. I'm going to pay him a ton for two years. I'm going to say, I want to guarantee you a ton of money. You're going to be rich forever. I'm not going to pay a ton in the back end. you gotta, you got to be good to us. I'll pay you big early. But you're going to be on the – we're going to win We're this contract year four. you gotta, you got to be okay with that. Uh, because I, but I do think with Zeke, I think the off-field stuff, Joy, it's a real difference maker for me. I, I just I'm not going to live with that stuff. I can't do it. Can't live with it. All right, speaking for yourself around the corner, I want to thank Chris Broussard, Albert Breer, TJ Hushmanzada, Joy Taylor, and all the entire staff. We'll see you tomorrow. It's The Herd.